Okay, this is continuation, sorry about that. Chapter two, lecture A, part two. Uh, sorry for the interruption, we'll try to link these together. But you can see Jamestown Colony, geographically is not that far from the Lost Colony Roanoke, but it's significantly farther north. So for John Smith, who had came down from um, Jamestown to look for the, the Lost Colonists, it was actually a pretty big endeavor. Now the social crisis. We're looking at England and the New World Three. Refugees from England surplus population. Basically, England had a bunch of people living on the streets. This was a way to clean the streets up. Hey, go to the New World. Leave England behind so London's nice and clean. 16th and 17th, landlords sought profits by raising uh, sheep and modern farming practices, basically evicting a bunch of small farmers who flooded the streets. This is known as the enclosure movement. England cities were flooded with poor everywhere. For, the, for years, the government struggled to deal with this social crisis. Thus, now they had an opportunity to get rid of them in the colonies. As colonists, they could become productive citizens, contribute to the nation's wealth, and plus have a new start at life. Now, masterless men. These were viewed as danger to silently. Only those who controlled their own labor could be truly free. So, the new world was a land of opportunity. These men could decide their fate. John Smith, every man may be master and owner of his own la labor and land if he's willing to work and put in the effort. So, England's going to say, go to the New World. So a lot of these adventure seekers will die, but a lot of them will be successful as well, and they'll come to the New World, and they'll be that initial population. The coming of the English. English immigrants. By 17th century, America was unstable in a dangerous uh, environment. Disease decimated both Indians and settlers. Those that went there also got diseases as well, not used to being in the environment. Uh, without sustained immigration, most settlements would have collapsed, so thus they keep bringing more and more people up. With a population between four and five, England had half that population of France and Spain, but more men, women, and children willing to go. Meaning, England had about a population between four and five million. That was half the population of France and Spain. But the biggest difference between the English and the French and the Spanish was more families were willing to leave England and move to the New World. And that's critical. Without women, and children, men by themselves can't reproduce, can they? So men need women, and then they bring their families, create new, and then they just start populating the colonies. It'll take a while for that to be stable for obvious reasons. Now, between 1600 and 1700, uh, 500,000 people will leave England and move to the colonies. About 180,000 went to Ireland, and another 180,000 or so went to the West Indies. Sugar plantations is gonna draw many to the Caribbean. Sugar plantation is the first major cash crop. You grow sugar, you can make lots of money. Because back in England, people drank tea. Today, even buy sweet tea is the most common tea in this area. So the birth of cavities from sugar was born. Now the Chesapeake area of Virginia uh, and Maryland with the tobacco farms developed a constant demand for cheap labor. 120,000 or so are gonna come to that area to come in and start growing tobacco. New England attracted maybe 21,000 before 1640. So going back to New England, Massachusetts area, it was not highly profitable. Many people didn't want to move there because it was religious strictness. Uh, or Virginia and the, the Carolinas come make money, right? That's more lucrative, more ideal than a strict religious community. Middle colonies drew maybe 23,000. It's going to be those southern colonies, and that's why the issue of slavery is going to become a bigger issue later on, because they're going to attract the bigger population initially. Indentured servants, those who could uh, pay, and then you can see on this map where people went and how they broke down. Those who could pay for their way, uh, as free, arrived as free persons, artisan, government officials, clergy, nobility, they had the better life. But... In the 17th century, nearly two-thirds were indentured servants that came, and those were those masterless men. They would give up their freedom to work five to seven years uh, for passage to America. Many died before they could even reach their time, or died on the voyage, uh, received a freedom due at the end, but so meager could hardly do anything with it, and oftentimes they were back into crappy jobs. But the idea of the promise of freedom lured many into this system. And it is a form of slavery. People don't want to think about it that way, but it is. But it allowed people to come over and populate the colonies. Land and liberty. Land was the basis of liberty, also led to the right to vote. This is something that's going to be crazy different than Europe. This is the first time men can acquire land and be able to gain the right to vote. Historically in England, all the land had been divvied up amongst families, and you couldn't gain that freedom. But in the, the colonies, you could. That's why America is going to be so distinctly different. So land and the colonies represented liberty, and that was the first most goal in many of those men's minds. 
Now they went from being masterless to now they could be the masters of their own fate. English and the Indians. Land was already occupied by Indians. Oops. The English had no desire to marry Indian women or mix with the Indians. They wanted to move them west, different than the French or the Spanish who would intermingle with Indians. Forced treaties upon the Indians and they, that they, then they could sell the land and make money. Since the Indians didn't approve the land, they believed the land had no real claim to it. So meaning the land was just a timber or whatever. Yeah, we're going to improve it. You haven't done anything with it. You don't really own the land. Kind of hogwash. Now, constant conflict in the government did not enforce the laws, and there's going to be constant problems with Indians and English settlers. That's going to continue all the way to America and then into the 1800s. Transformation of Indian life. Indians insist initially liked the newcomers for their, the goods they brought, guns, horses, and all other items. But Indians became integrated into the Atlantic economy. Subtle changes took place in their way of life. They adopted guns, horses, like I said, uh, customs of the English, and so forth. Profits mostly went to merchants. Indians also warred with each other over territory as beaver and deer populations plummeted and were hunted down. Indian population also went down through death uh, from violence, disease, and other things. The environment changed with loss of wood, introduction of livestock, and cultivating land is going to have drastic uh, changes on the Indians. Suddenly the Chesapeake. Now... Jamestown Colony, it was a struggle to say the least. Starving time occurred uh, at when it was initially founded in 1600 or 1607. Uh, 400 settlers went to Jamestown. After that first initial surge, 65 remained. There are accounts that closing occurred amongst uh, other things um, because food was so scarce. Yeah. Imagine eating your friend Freddy because he died and you did it because you were hungry. Not a good thing, right? There is side effects from cannibalism. Now, you can eat human in short moderation for a short period without long-lasting effects. The reason they know this is they've studied tribes that are cannibals. After periods, uh, people can have nervous system effects. The best analogy to understand if this is mad cow disease. Mad cow disease was born from feeding fertilizer or grain or cow feed that was reprocessed cattle. So essentially cannibalism of cows, right? It affected the brain and the nervous system. Essentially that's the same process that happens when you eat, humans eat humans. Initially it doesn't cause usually any problems, but long duration of it can. And then one of the common things is, and this is sometimes stereotypes of movies, but they have found that is the shaking. People that start shaking a lot, nervous system breakdown, uh, changing the color of skin. I mean, there, there, there's some still cannibalistic tribes out there um, in the Pacific, and that's what they found. Kind of creepy. John Smith came in as an iron rule because he realized these people are just going to die if he don't come in and have some order. Head right system awarded 50 acres of land to any colonist who paid his own and others to come, a way to create large estates, and people will make large family estates from this process that have money. Houses of Burgess just was started in 1619, and the first 20 blacks or so will arrive in the colonies. Uh, the Powhatan and Pocahontas Wana Shanakakak, Powhatan, ruled the area around Jamestown. Saw opportunity for trade and worked with the locals. Pocahontas came to the rescue of John Smith and then became intermediary between the two peoples. However, she does not marry John Smith. She ends up marrying another one of the explorers named John Roth and went to England where she died in 1617 due to disease. Now, John Roth is famous because he's the one that introduces tobacco to Virginia and makes it very profitable. And now for the first time, Jamestown has a way to make money. Uprising of 1622, Open a Pocahontan successor and brother. It's, it's like Opahontan, I'm, I'm butchering the name, which is on the next slide. Opahakan Kof. Pocahontan's successor and brother led a revolt that killed one fourth <laughs> of Virginia's population. They went from 1,200 to 900 people. Uh, so you can see, initially they were friendly, now they're violent. It failed, and the English countered and defeated the Indians. So the, the Indian revolt against the English settlers, initially successful, were, were revolt in their massive uh, death. Now, Virginia will become the first royal colony, meaning it was uh, become property of the crown. John Roth had helped spur economic growth that the, with the introduction of tobacco, uh, and Virginia now the crown wants to control. A ca tobacco colony became Virginia's gold. Uh, de demand for labor will increase, thus the ushering in of more uh, slaves 
and started to resemble England with an upper class, middle class, and a lot of poor. Now, women in the family, there was, this was obviously, could you see, there's no fam, stable family life, so people would die, people would remarry, lots of intermixing uh, of families. Men outnumbered women four to, or five to one. That's not good odds for men, but great for the ladies. However, this also made it very dangerous for ladies, especially if they were unaccompanied, not married. You can see where this is going. Rape was very prevalent in these time periods. So men who needed the fix for women would not be afraid to commit rape. Uh, high death rate made a lot of single men, widows, and orphans. Uh, dower rights become a big right to half of the one or one third of the husband's property in event of death. A few became femisol, women alone, but most of the time women would be remarried off if their husband died. The Maryland experiment, tobacco was the crop, started in 1632 as a proprietary colony granted to a single individual who wanted to make a safe haven for Catholics, ironically enough. Ce uh, Cecilius Calvert uh, tried to grant him full, free, and absolute power there. He wanted to make Maryland a place of religious toleration, freedom of economics, and so forth. He envisioned Maryland as a refuge for perse persecuted corolingualists or harmony between Catholics and Protestants, uh, but at least initially offered a greater opportunity of freedom for many there. Now, as we see here, you have a drastic change in many, many things. Uh, as the English come in here, they're going to create their own unique system, uh, not that different from the Spanish and the French, just doing, going about it different. They're going to take over land, set up new settlements, and make it very European feel. Now, as we get into the final lecture for this chapter two, probably tomorrow, um, understand the English are lagging behind. They're trying to play catch up and they're going to catch up very quickly. While they're doing this, they're also taking on the Spanish and the French around the world and other places. It won't come to fruitation for another hundred years with a major war, the French and Indian War, but you can see now as they expand, not only are they having to deal with natives, they're going to have to deal with other European powers wanting the same thing. And have a great day.